Well, to all of my listeners, happy Thanksgiving. And I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on in the Middle East and what you should be looking for as we look for the coming of the Lord. And when I say that, I mean the rapture of the church. You know, of course, all of of what's going on in the Middle East, such as the battle against Hamas, and I hope that Israel does stick to their guns and finally eradicate Hamas from the the, uh, Gaza Strip and the West Bank. And, of course, many of you know that Israel has made a deal to give Hamas 150 of their prisoners in exchange for 50 hostages, and uh, I'm wondering how many hostages are really still alive. But Israel has said that they will give them one day of ceasefire for every 10 hostages from here on out. Now, the projected time of this uh, hostage exchange is tomorrow, and there are already questions as to whether or not this will really take place, but we'll have to wait and see. And I certainly hope common sense prevails, because the bottom line is, until Israel finally wipes out Hamas and brings back some sort of peace and safety to the uh, Gaza Strip, they're always going to be under the threat of attack until that day comes. So I would hope that they would finally realize that they need to get rid of Hamas. And you know, there's the argument that even if they get rid of Hamas, that's not going to take away the terrorist threat. Somebody will always come in and fill the void. And, you know, I have no doubt that's probably going to be the case, but uh, Israel's going to have to come up with a master plan in order for that to take place. You know, there's one thing that not too many people remember, and that is the Bible says that at some point in time, because of the hatred of the Jews worldwide, that at some point the Jews will begin to come back in droves to the land that God has prepared for them. And, you know, I think that is all part of what's going on right now with the worldwide uh, anti-Semitism that's taking place. And I think it's only going to get worse. And here I can give you a report right now. This just coming in. It says a four-day pause in Israel's military campaign in Gaza will begin early Friday. And the first hostages will be released hours later, uh, Qatar said. So there you are, the latest in what's going on in the Middle East. You know, the question has always been, what has this got to do with Bible prophecy? And, you know, I told you in my last report that don't get bogged down on these wars. And I'm sure every Bible prophecy speaker, podcaster, or whatever the case may be, is trying to tell you that this is just a precursor to the rapture of the church. But I would probably say that it's more likely that it's just wars and rumors of wars. But there is an end game to this madness. You know, a U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken is still calling for a two-state solution. Of course, Israel has waived a two-state solution in the uh, face of Hamas and uh, the West Bank for many, many years. In fact, at one point in time, Palestinian leader uh, Abbas was uh, offered 90% of the West Bank along with other perks, and he turned it down because he said it would be a death sentence. And the reason why it would be a death sentence is because Both terrorist groups, Fatah and also uh, Gaza, or I should say Hamas, want nothing more than the river to the sea, which means they want the extermination of Israel. And if they were ever to accept any type of land swap, it would only be to to strategically destroy Israel at some point in time in the future. So don't think for a second that a two-state solution would ever work, although that may very well be a part of a future agreement that will come up, I believe, in the near future. And here's something that you also may need to take a look at, but probably should take it with a grain of salt. It says uh, that Putin says he is ready to end war as fighting with Ukraine is tragedy. And the subheading says that Putin also blamed Ukraine's President Zelensky for the continued fighting, saying Russia has never refused peace talks. Now, I've always believed that at some point in time, that once the rapture does take place, that there would be a regional peace that would include likely Russia and Ukraine, the Houthis and uh, Iran and also Saudi Arabia. Of course, China would probably try to slip in there as well with their peace with Taiwan, although many would say that's probably not going to take place, but we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Of course, North Korea and South Korea can also be mentioned uh, And last but not least, we'd also have to say that Israel and the Palestinians would also play a major part in, uh, along with the modern Arab world, 
in some type of peace, or should I say normalization. Certainly there is also rumored out there that uh, at some point in time, once this war with Hamas has ended, that normalization talks with Saudi Arabia would continue. But let me remind you also at the same time, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to do so. And the best way to subscribe, of course, you could hit the notification button in YouTube, but also at the same time, I would encourage you to get on my Gitter account. Just look up the Calvary Prophecy Report after you've downloaded the app. And you can find that app in any one of your favorite app stores, whatever the case may be. And then begin to follow me. You'll not only get the reports that I send out on YouTube, but also you will get up-to-the-minute uh, reports and articles and my comments on a daily basis. So I hope that you will take the time and begin staying up to date with the Calvary Prophecy Report. And there's a couple things that I wanted to bring to your attention as well that I believe is fascinating. Now, number one, I reported this uh, probably a year or two ago, that Israel was developing a system called the Iron Beam Laser Interceptors. Now, they weren't going to introduce this into the missile defense system that they have until 2025, but because of this war, they've upgraded it to using it right now and fully developing it as they use it to knock down missiles, uh, rockets, mortars, drones, and I'm sure other threats that may come in the coming years. Now, the beauty of this is that this laser beam that they've created cost pennies on the dollar for them to, to knock down a missile, whereas in the past it cost $50,000 per Iron Dome missile that would knock down incoming rockets and missiles. So this is certainly a game changer for Israel. And you know, in describing it, the uh, creator says say that it's like playing a video game almost. Uh, they can knock down missile after missile after missile and can virtually never be overwhelmed because the beam can be directed from, like I said, missile to missile to missile, and it can knock it down as quickly as the beam can hit it. Now, of course, it does take a couple seconds for it to finally take effect, whereas with a, an Iron Dome missile, it destroys it upon contact. But if, you, if, if uh, Israel would have had to use the Iron Dome to knock down all the missiles that were fired at them, which was somewhere around 10,000, it likely would have overwhelmed the system and there would have been a lot more casualties and destruction in Israel. And you know, something else that you may want to keep in mind, this may get to the point where they develop this to the point that they are knocking down ballistic missiles and other types of missiles that could, uh, in the future, be carrying nuclear warheads. And if that ever becomes the case, Israel would be the only country in the world that uh, is immune to a nuclear threat. You know, that would be very exciting because all these years that the world has viewed Israel as a liability to the United States could someday share this technology with the United States and make them immune to a nuclear threat. Now, whether or not that will ever happen, I don't know. The Bible does say that at some point in time there will be a war that will claim the lives of one quarter of the world's population. So I don't know if that uh, piece of technology will ever be developed to the point that nuclear a nuclear threat is uh, finally wiped out, or it may come to the point that Israel does not share this technology, but instead keeps it a secret, and when this war does break out, that's how they survive. Now here's something else I also wanted to bring to your attention that happened yesterday, and I'm sure many of you have heard about it, that uh, near Niagara Falls, United States border crossing, that the Rainbow, Rainbow Bridge was attacked by a speeding car that they initially thought was an airplane. And here's a piece of the article that says that two men who had been traveling in the vehicle both died of in the explosion. Their identities remain unknown and there were no other serious injuries. Now it also says a suitcase was found inside the vehicle, but it remains conf uh, but it remains unconfirmed whether there were any explosives inside. Now of course Officials were uh, quick to say that it was not a terrorist attack, but I have to believe that in the end we're gonna, probably going to find out that it was. And, you know, some experts indicate that that probably was a dry run and that the next uh, attempt will be an explosion. And it won't be from the gas tank blowing up. It'll be from actual explosives that probably are, were in that suitcase. 
And I have a feeling that the United States is going to begin to see the fruits of their labor of allowing anyone to breach their borders and to walk right into the United States. You know, it's being estimated that there's probably somewhere around 10 million gotaways, and no telling how many were terrorists. And from that, I think we're going to see what the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, 3, verse 1. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I don't think we've seen that in its entirety yet. And of course, during the tribulation period, it's going to get even worse than that. So with that in mind, here are some of the things that I think that you should continue to stay focused on and to get away from some of these reports and conspiracy theories that plague the Bible prophecy world today and continue to confuse people. Now, as always, I think that you should keep your eyes on the four main things that the Bible has said would be precursors of the tribulation period, and that are they are wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes, and famines. Now, as I've mentioned many times, I believe that three of the four are taking place right now and are converging. There's still one that lags, and that is famines. You know, I had one reader comment in one of the uh, videos that I did that they believed that famines was probably going to take place during the tribulation period. And that very well may be the case. I doubt it, but that could happen. But I firmly believe that God is going to send all four converging signs as a precursor to the tribulation period. And at some point in time, the rapture is going to take place before the, of course, before the tribulation period begins. So I'd certainly keep my eyes on the development of these four signs. And certainly I would keep my eyes on what's going on between Israel and Hamas right now and see where this ultimately goes. Now, certainly this war is not uh, biblical, meaning that it's not mentioned in the Bible, but what comes of it very well may be. So that's why I I always uh, encourage you to keep an eye on what is going on in the Middle East, whether or not it is a direct prophecy or what it could be an indirect prophecy. And, you know, it's probably more likely that this is going to be an indirect prophecy that will be developed and will ultimately uh, lead to some sort of peace with many that I believe will, of course, include Russia, Ukraine, and the others that I mentioned earlier. But I certainly believe that these are stepping stones to what ultimately is going to come. And one thing is for sure, if you don't know the Lord, you need to get to know Him right now. And I would also recommend that you get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. And not only you, but I'd also recommend that you get a copy for your lost friends and loved ones. Go down to the description section of this video, click on the link, and you can either get the free version, which is written in nine different languages, or you can get the uh, English version, the paperback, uh, which you can physically hand to your lost friend or loved one. And one thing you should know that this book is tailored toward what will actually happen during the tribulation period. You know, that's an important aspect of this book. You know, there are many people out there that have created uh, some type of tribulation survival guide based upon other things. But this actually takes the events step by step and tells you what you need in order to survive. So I'd recommend that you get a copy of this book, take a look at it, and I don't think you'll be disappointed in what you read. Well, that's the end of my report. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.